Okay, just a slight adjustment there. And we will get right into the food items, the water items, stuff that kind of gives off a fragrance um, because of what I just explained. You want to store it all in a place where critters can't get at it. Um, otherwise, they will go through your equipment to eat it. So, uh, where to start? Um, oh, one thing I just grabbed here, um, which I forgot to mention, is another game. Um, if you don't want to take playing cards, or if you have a bigger group, you can take a game like Bananagrams. This is a really good backpacking game because the tiles are waterproof. You can play it virtually anywhere and it's really easy to play. So that was just another recommendation for a game if you have the space to take it. Okay, so the kind of more uh, scented stuff that I take are things like wet wipes. These are really handy for cleanup if you don't want to wash your dishes with you know soap and go through the whole hassle of getting water and a dish to contain the, di the soap water. Uh, this makes it really easy. You just pull a wet wipe out and wipe it down. You can also use it uh, during campfire activities, you know, if you're cooking marshmallows stuff gets messy. So these are always handy to take. Um, pack soap. This stuff is available in big bottles, but it's concentrated. So I recommend taking it from a large bottle and putting it in a smaller bottle. Um, this is the MSR brand and it works pretty well. I just put it in a smaller thing in here. This is my little toiletries bag. It's got toothbrush, toothpaste, bug spray, lip chap, uh, various other things that just smell good. And I keep it all in a bag. And so when I'm done with whatever item I need, I just put it back and, and then store it in the bear locker or if I don't have a bear locker accessible, I will use a bag. Actually, I use this anyway, regardless of whether there is a, a bear locker or not. This just keeps all of my food in one bag, and when I'm hungry, I just get it out and take what I need. Um, this is just a small thing of sunscreen. I don't usually take sunscreen. Um, because I'm usually wearing a long sleeve shirt or, or long sleeve pants and I don't need it. Deodorant. This is a small 14 gram, like a convenience store size deodorant stick. I don't really need to take anything much bigger than that. Uh, it's always nice to smell good on a trip, especially if you're on a long trip with the same people and you're sweating and gross and you haven't had a shower in a few days. Okay, so the food items that I actually take are mostly the same. I mean, they don't, I don't have a lot of, a lot of variety in the things that I take, but I'll usually take something like Mountain House Instant Meals or Alpine Air, there's a couple other uh, meal brands. This is a breakfast one. I've never taken these before. I ha haven't actually tried these, but I hear they're good. So, drink mixes, apple cider, hot chocolate, coffee. I think that's it. Those are the drink items I carry. I take a lot of drink uh, just in case, you know, someone forgot some. And this is really, really nice during a, a hike. And it's just a little bit of a pick-me-up, especially if it's cold. And during winter, you need hot beverages in your system. Uh, 
lunch type materials. These are some of the best lunch materials I can recommend. Um, they're these single serve packages of tuna and I just take them with some pita or uh, not pita, some tortilla wraps and I will just take one package in a tortilla wrap and put some mayonnaise in it and I have a really simple really good lunch and so I might take you know three or four of these in a weekend and they are delicious really easy to pack very little cleanup really really simple uh, another really easy thing and it's cheap is Idaho four cheese potatoes or Idahoan uh, or well, not just four cheese potatoes this is my preferred uh, package the four cheese type but there's other types like loaded baked potato that one's really good buttery home style which is okay if you just want to change it up but this is my favorite really easy and it has loads of calories in it decent backpacking meal it's not exactly uh, you know it's, it's pretty basic it tastes all right but I mean for backpacking you can't be picky exactly so for breakfast again there are some of these mountain house things or other brands but usually I will just take simple oatmeal instant oatmeal uh, the flavor types are usually okay but they are too sweet for me so I take a few extra packs of regular oatmeal and supplement the, the flavored ones that way I have the, the, the flavored ones last longer and there's more substance to my my breakfast I don't know it's just I like taking regular it makes things simpler for me so snacks there are a lot of different things I take for snacks um, a lot of gummy candies chocolate uh, trail mix M&Ms stuff like that but I also take cliff bars that's pretty universal I don't think uh, most people take cliff bars is what I'm trying to say uh, sometimes I'll take cold items like uh, sausages or cheese real cheese and it sometimes is necessary to take a cold pack or ice depending on if I can get it or not or accommodate it in my pack but this is just an ice pack um, you pop the thing in the middle and it's cold for who knows how many hours I think it's I think it's a couple hours so if I have stuff that needs to stay cold I take that okay um, water stuff do I want to do this now yeah um, for water usually I won't take all of it I'm just trying to think of how to do this here uh, actually I'm going to start with the water filter because it's kind of the heart of this whole thing I usually take the MSR mini works water filter I think that's what it's called um, really basic filter really basic parts really easy to maintain and it lasts a while um, this is the maintenance kit that they sell separately and uh, it's got a couple extra o-rings um, some spare parts that may need replacing and this has worked very well for me in the past so I'm pretty happy with it it's not exactly the, the fastest um, filter I've been looking at getting one of those gravity fed ones but this seems to work for now this is a Sawyer squeeze this works a little bit faster um, but it's not as reliable or it doesn't filter as much I don't think anyway this is kind of my backup because it's so light I take this with some other kits or on uh, day trips 
So this is the backwash system. It basically, all you use to filter the water is the filter itself and this connector hose if you need it. Um, and then you just attach it to one of these flat bottles. Hang on. I have a few here. So I got a variety of flat bottles. This is a two liter, uh, there's a half a liter, one liter, stuff like that. And you just attach it to this filter and you get, um, actually, I think you just fill this up with uh, unfiltered water and then you just squeeze it through the filter and it goes into whatever reservoir you want. You can just dump it right into a cup or, you know, process it in your bottle. Uh, it works very well and quick. It's, it's nice. Really light. So if you can't take a full-size filter like this one, the Sawyer Squeeze is a much better option. Uh, in terms of large water capacity, this is what I was going to start with. But, um, these are large, like, multi-gallon bags. I think this is a four... or uh, two-gallon. This one is the one I prefer, but it leaks. It's kind of old. This is the Stansport uh, bag, water bag. I can't remember what it's called, but it's super cheap. It's like five bucks. If you look on Amazon, you'll be able to find it. This is the Reliance, and it's a 10 liter or four gallon. Anyway, it is all right, but it's a lot heavier and it's a lot more expensive. This one cost me, I think, $15, if I'm not mistaken. And it's just got a lot more useless plastic that you don't need. This thing is very well thought out and, um, Minimalistic. This one, it's got a nice spout, which is nice. This one, the spout kind of sucks. Um, it's just a long, basically, tube of plastic, and you have to pour the water through it, and it just kind of ends up messy. This has a much nicer spout, but it's a lot heavier. So that's the large water storage. Sometimes I will just skip those and store water in bottles, like the Nalgene bottles. It just depends on the length of trip. I have a couple Nalgene bottles. This is a Camelback. Uh, can't remember what it's called. And this is a uh, insulated MSR Alpine bottle. This is handy for hot drinks. If you want to make a hot drink and then keep hiking, this will keep it hot for a while. It's, it's basically a thermos. And uh, these are not cheap either. I think these cost around $30, $35. And they originally come with this quick release lid, but I like this lid more and I use this Nalgene bottle, so I just swapped the lids. So now this lid is on here and it's much more convenient. So this is not the lid that comes on this bottle. Just be aware of that. Um, shoot, I keep wondering where I want to go next. Uh, I guess I'll just quickly talk about... No. No. I'm going to talk about those later. Uh, okay. Other food items. This is more food prep items. I don't always take all of these. These these are my most useless things, so usually this stays behind. It's an egg container. Sometimes I will eat eggs, sometimes not. Um, it's got some other items in there, like stuff for this, these condiment dispensers. I don't use these either. Uh, I have a little um, dishcloth. It's not really much to say about that. This comes with the um, the kit with this and a couple other things, which I'll get to. But that kit is good. Whoops. And uh, it comes with this, uh, some spatulas and stuff, and I've used those. Uh, 
these are Lexan cutlery pieces. Um, I don't use these very often now that I have a, a different kit, which again, I will show you. Um, these are just a little too heavy and large and cumbersome. Um, and they don't fit in any of my pots. So Lexan is good, it's high quality, and it's durable, but it's just not quite what my system can handle. So uh, this is a cutting board. I don't really use this, but sometimes, like I said, when I take sausages and stuff, I need to cut them, so I don't like cutting them on bare like campfire uh, or uh, Picnic tables. That's the word I'm trying to say. God, I'm just not in this right now. It's, it's This is a lot to cover. So, Anyway, uh, these are the plates and bowls that I take. This is Fossil's, uh, Fossil's dinnerware, I guess. It's just a flat origami type bowl and plate. You just fold it and snap it in place. And there you go, you have a bowl. I like this because it folds flat and I can put it virtually anywhere in my pack. Uh, this is some uh, instant uh, energy drink. It's like a little tablet, like an Alka Seltzer tablet. You put it in your water and it turns it into an energy drink. It's nice to take long. I take that everywhere as well, sports and stuff. Uh, Cup is just basic plastic cup, not much to say there. Now to get into the pots and other cookware. Um, this is more of a solo cooking pot. It's a Trek 700. Um, made by Snowpeak. It has the Snowpeak Giga Power and a little canister in there. It's perfect for short trips or trips by yourself and because it can function both as a cup and a small pot. It doesn't hold much, only 700 milliliters, obviously. But I find that adequate for most things. You know, Idaho and four cheese potatoes, one pack only takes about one of these. Um, of course, I can mix any amount of drinks I want in there. It, it works well. This is a good trekking pot. I think there are lots of reviews online for it. I keep it in this mesh bag. It's not the original mesh bag, but this one works much better. That is the Snowpeak 700 Trek 700. More fuel. It's just isopro fuel. Um, I date mine. So whenever I get a new can, I will write the date when I buy it. Um, usually these things only last one season or one year. So I just write the year. That way I know which one I need to take if they carry over. This pot here is a set by MSR. Uh, it comes with one lid and one talon grip. As you can see though, I have two lids and two talon grips. I bought the talon grip and lid separately uh, for this one, just in case I don't need to take this whole two and a half liter pot. I can just take the one and a half liter pot and still have a lid and pot grip for it. Or I can store them both, as you saw, and uh, have a nice little self-contained system. These pots work good, they process a lot of water, and they have a nice lid. Um, very spacious. This is highly recommended. I think this set only costs $45, $40, somewhere around there. Um, and it works well. Cheaper than most other pot sets. If you get another talon grip and another pot lid, you're looking at adding another $30 to it. So you end up spending about $70 on this system. It comes with this little cleanup rag. It's kind of just a little bonus and uh, works well. 
In order to make this thing fit in this pot, I had to cut down the handle. As you can see there, this handle is a little taller. So, it's not bad. I can still grip it and everything works. Inside I've got uh, the MSR Pocket Rocket. Everyone knows about that one. Another little lighter. My cutlery, which I'll expound on in a second. And this bowl, which is the Sea to Summit X Bowl. I think I'm going to replace the Fossils Bowl with this one. Um, it's a little bit larger. It's much more sturdy, I guess. It's pretty cool. And the main thing is that it fits inside this pot. So I don't have to worry about uh, finding a spot for that one or losing it or whatever. It just fits in here and everything is contained. So the cutlery, I have a set of knife, fork, spoon, and chopsticks, and they all have this kind of clip-on system. Uh, I can't remember what they're called. I think they're called the Sistema cutlery set. Look it up. Um, then I have a long spoon for my backpacking meals. This is the Snow Peak Titanium folding spoon. It folds in half. And then I've got a couple of light my fire grandpa's fire forks they're basically little fire forks that you stick on the end of a stick and you have an instant roasting stick so i take these instead of these because they're so much more compact uh, there's no reason to take these anymore so this is kind of just to show you what else is being used so grandpa's fire forks by light my fire it's hard to keep track of all these names for things. It's kind of annoying. So that's my cooking system sometimes. Um, I might do a separate review on this one later. Uh, I kind of covered it pretty well in this video. Um, that set is the MSR Quick set, I think. It comes with the two and a half liter pot, the one and a half liter pot, and the cleanup rag, and the talon grip, and the lid. So, if, in case you're wondering, or want to look it up. Another pot that I sometimes take is the Vargo Titanium 1.3 liter pot. It's basically the same as the one and a half liter pot in there. It's got its own lid. Um, it's very spacious. It's very, very light. Sometimes I'll take this over that other one, uh, but it's got some other stuff in there. Most of the time I don't use these items in this one, um, but that wind guard I do take. Um, that wind guard is for the Giga Power, Snow Peak Giga Power. Um, I don't know, that wind guard is kind of useful. I would recommend getting one if you have if you have a Snow Peak Giga Power, but you can always improvise a windshield if you want. This thing is a jet boil frying pan. It's pretty expensive for what you get. Um, I think I paid around $50 for it. It's a nice compact and lightweight pan, but really, who? uses pans that often. It's got this nice heat ring around it, which you're supposed to use with the jet boil system. I don't have a jet boil, so I just kind of use it like a normal frying pan. But that's a frying pan. I don't know what else to say. Um, okay, that's it for food prep, mostly. Oh, except for this item. It's kind of more to do with water. This is a Camelback Reservoir, uh, Antidote Reservoir. Holds about three liters of water and it goes in a Camelback bag that I have. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of Camelbacks. I usually just take bottles. So 
I rarely use these. Plus, when I go winter camping, these are virtually useless because they freeze all the time. But during summer, sometimes I take them. Uh, the bag I usually use doesn't have a, a water bladder um, system, like the hole for the hose and the pocket for the bag. It didn't have that, so I never took it. The other bags that I use, or that I will be using, do have that. So if I want to, I can take them. Uh, I'm going to get into footwear, cover that stuff, and then I'll have to adjust the camera angle and cover the rest. So uh, for winter footwear and stuff, um, win or plain old winter gear, uh, I take a shovel. This is a black diamond shovel D7. Uh, it's a good shovel. I haven't used it much and it's compact. Uh, just essential winter gear. I don't have much to say about it. Um, other stuff I will take winter camping. Uh, ski goggles. These are useful in high wind areas or if you're just doing a lot of uh, hiking. Snowshoes. These are MSR snowshoes. Um, everyone uses those. Uh, they work good. I've used them quite a lot. Footwear. Oh, hang on. For uh, hiking poles, I take Alpine. Uh, no, what are these called? These are the Black Diamond. Um, Z poles. They're the lightest one. They're carbon. I can't remember what they're called, but they, they work really well. I've taken them on many trips. These are the Alpine carbon corks. He's got the flick locks and the basket, the removable snow baskets, cork handles. Excellent, excellent snow. Or, uh, well, I, yeah, you could use them as snowshoes, as snowshoe poles. Good poles all around. Kind of expensive though. Be prepared to spend a lot of money. And footwear. Oh, forgot to mention this. Bear spray. Um, I it's required in Alberta to take bear spray, so uh, I just usually put this right next to my water bottle in my pack, in one of those elastic um, pockets, and. Uh, I've never had to use it, so there you go. Footwear, flip-flops. These are for after I get to camp, obviously. I don't hike in these, but uh, it's nice to have a separate set of footwear that you can relax in, um, let your feet just breathe. So everything sandals works well. Uh, these are the hiking boots I take. These are really warm boots, uh, the Merrill Norshund Omegas. They are kind of warm for winter, for summer hiking, and I don't know, kind of heavy, but they're durable. So if you're hiking a lot or in rough terrain, rocky terrain, um, I'm fairly certain they will hold up to most of that. So. I mean, I've taken it on pretty, pretty uh, trying uh, excursions, so I, they're good. I use them. They're out of style, though, so um, there are probably better boots out there. I've seen them, though, on sale for, you know, 100 bucks. so if you want really good quality boots, Search around some outlet stores, some uh, clearance shoe stores, and see if you can find some. I did the other day, and I was tempted to buy another pair just because they're that good. Okay, I'm going to pause the video, adjust the angle, and we'll cover everything else.